How does one go about starting a YouTube video anyway? Holy crap, a lot has happened in the last little while. We started kind of recording stuff around Christmas time. We had a couple shows, then we had another show. I recorded a song uh, with Colin Fowley that we released that's doing really well. We're also about to release a single. I decided to just make a compilation video of basically everything that's happened since right before Christmas. We're gonna do this vlog in chapters because that's gonna make it interesting. Chapter one, playing a golf bar. Is Papa gonna play music today, Eloise? No. Oh, okay. I've got my, my favorite mug. Not really a Christmas show, but like a show close to Christmas. And look, it's snowing. We're heading off here in a second. I want to pick up an ugly Christmas sweater blazer. <laughs> Are you all set for the weather? Look at the shoes. Eloise, show everyone your shoes. Are they Crocs? Those are Crocs, aren't they? So today we're packing the car with band gear and video gear. This side of the car is camera stuff. This side of the car is music. I got to bring my amp still. Okay, so we're running a few errands um, before packing up. Well, I packed up all the gear for the show and I have to go pick up some things at the office. Um, we're gonna try to get a few groceries. So we're trying to make this efficient, but I have to be at the show in a couple hours. I have to be there for seven and it's, well, you just checked, it's 4.30. So this show, as I mentioned, is a private party at a golf bar. But what we always do when we play here and we make more work for ourselves than we probably should, well, <laughs> we end up bringing a drum riser, uh, lights, fog machine, it ends up being a lot more stressful for the whole band the day of because we have so much stuff to do. Right, Marie? Oh, yeah. What are you, the Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What are you, the Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid? Well, I don't know why he's called the Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid guy. <laughs> I think it's just the Kool-Aid man. Do you have that in Germany? No. You don't have the Kool-Aid man? I have a Kool-Aid. Oh, okay. Show yourself. Oh, there she is. There's the Kool-Aid, Marie. It's like a party and we'll keep it coming. This is gonna get cut out of the video cause it's embarrassing. <laughs> so I almost broke my mic pack cause I forgot it wasn't attached to me. Okay, I'll be back. I have C-stands that I bring and they're really heavy and awkward. Marie said she was gonna help me. She's just filming. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I asked her to film, ouch. I think I just cut myself. I think the next piece has to go here. So I'll see you in a second. This thing is so heavy. Great times. It's always good to be really tired before you even play. If you're uh, playing in a band, what do you do? Do you like to go all out for setups or do you like to just keep it simple? If you're an audience member, not in a band and you're watching this video, do you like it when bands go all out or would you prefer to just see a band show up and play the venue the way it's set? Comment below. <laughs> okay, so I just got done finding, I should have brought the bag. Where's the bag? I got a Christmas blazer. I got a Christmas hat. I wish they were like serving eggnog, rum and eggnog there. That's what I want right now. I'm going, I'm going. And then when I was going into the mall, um, someone was like, hey, yeah, you're the front guy, front man for Run the River. Yeah, I, I know your band. So that's always cool. It's too bad we didn't document it because I could be making it up, hey, Marie? Marie was there, so she knows it happened. Christmas part of the mission completed. And now we're going to go back to, closer to our house, um, to Walmart and pick up some groceries. So what do you think? Too much? This blazer over top of this shirt is a little extreme. I think maybe I'll do one or the other. Also like, you know, you have a super bold hat like this and then it's like, what is this? Also, I'm like starting to feel kind of a little bit unwell. You know when you're like starting to get sick and you get that, just that feeling in your body? I kind of have that happening, which is not fun. The fact that I have to play like a two hour show tonight. But, and this is also really hot, I think. I think it's just like too many layers. Definitely ugly. Uh, definitely Christmas. Look, this one's got like reindeer. I'm gonna try to have a quick supper and then we're gonna keep, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to the venue and we're gonna start setting stuff up because it's gonna take us a while. Okay, we're ready to go down to the venue. I have this shirt on, but I'm gonna have the other shirt on over top of it. <laughs> we're on our way, planes, trains, and automobiles. Anyone watch that movie around Christmas time? It's friggin' classic. As a Canadian, there's some things that we're like super proud of. One of those things is John Candy. My supper consisted of two boiled eggs, and a couple pieces of toast. I feel like I'm getting sick. My stomach's kind of bothering me, so I'm like, okay, I don't want to risk it for a show. Can I park there? I'm going to. That's just car 94, whatever. This is where I'm parking. Oh, I got up dog. What is it? Up dog. I thought you said up dog, and I was like, don't do that to me. <laughs> What's up dog? <laughs> Once you get up into like the six percentage beers, I'm kind of like, 
It's like I'm eating a meal every beer I drink, and then it can hit you pretty quickly, so. Ed, can you ride down the conveyor belt, Ed? Sure, sure. Belly first? Tom Green would do it. You're drinking White Claw now? Yeah. Can I get another um, Cheval d'Or? That was my nickname in high school. The Bare Naked Ladies, you know the band? Chapter two, playing at Broken Record Music Room. The last thing you saw is that we were at Par 94, the golf bar. Um, we set up our stage, we played songs. I was pretty burnt out from kind of the setup and everything else. So I didn't film a post-show thing. We're actually playing a show tonight at a bar called Broken Record. So it's a week later, we're playing the next weekend. We're not sure what the turnout will be. It's being put on by a uh, buddy of ours, Eddie Young, who does Roots and Soul music promotion. Um, and awesome guy actually booked us on our first show. So I'm downtown now. It's not time yet to load in, so I'm just gonna chill in. Chris set up his drums already. I haven't brought in any of my guitar stuff because really there's no point in doing that yet. So let's go check out Broken Records. So we've got a sled. And there's Broken Record. There's the stage, you can see. We're gonna chill in the car for a minute, stay warm. They're not open for another half hour, I think. Drinking some homemade ginger tea. The ginger didn't really, like it's not strong enough. The ginger didn't quite creep in there enough. I like when ginger tea like is, is almost spicy. I see Rick showing up. I don't think it's open yet. That's why I came back in my car. Chris was already there, he set up. Eddie was there, Eddie had to go. So if you wanna ch chalk it in the back of the, my car, Here, so it's chill. Uh, and why can't I find your hand? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Like some of these are like really nice looking. It's like people yeah, thought about this. It's a cool idea though. I love the idea of like getting people to sign something. Okay, show is done. I'm putting my shit away. I took the mic off. You can probably still hear me. So thanks for joining us on, I guess it's been two shows. Chapter three playing the snow globe at Shivering Songs in our city. We didn't get a lot of footage of this show, but we went and we played at what's called Shivering Songs, which is an awesome festival put on in our city during the winter months. Part of what they do is they have this big inflatable snow globe thing. And we ended up playing in there. It was really cool, literally cool at the same time, because when we first got in, the doors were closed. They had these kind of flap doors that um, kept the cold air out. But once we started playing, they opened those doors and some cold air, it was a really cold night started coming through and we started to actually get really cold. When we first came in it was like, oh, it was nice and warm, but then this cross breeze. They use the back of where the band's playing as almost like a video screen and they have these like colorful snowflakes that are kind of moving around behind you, which is really cool. That was something that I've always wanted to play. It's always cool to play these festivals in your own community where you get to see your friends, you play with other bands that you like, and it's just a great opportunity. This chapter's a little shorter. We had someone come and film it for us so we at least could capture it. Drift away. Chapter four, recording cold like this. I've never really worked on anything like this. It's probably one of the coolest collaborations I've ever done, if not the coolest, because it wasn't just a collaboration with myself and another musician named Colin Fowley, who's an awesome guy, awesome musician. He offered to do this project for free and produce it for free and helped me so much with it. We were also collaborating with a local organization called the John Howard Society. They work a lot this time of year on a community fundraising event called Coldest Night of the Year, which helps raise funds for those experiencing hurt, hunger, and homelessness. Through this, we've done 
a lot of different things. We did a radio interview, which was really cool. We did a music video. Uh, we recorded. We did a bunch of different things. We're going to go to Colin's place. He has a studio there, and he's helping me record this song. Um, he's basically the session guitarist, session instrumentalist. He's doing a bunch of stuff, uh, lap steel and stuff like that, that he's putting on the song. <sighs> Some water to try to stay hydrated because my voice is a little feels a little dry I'm going to go uh, record for this song that we're working on the song is about something that's very personal for people um, it's like a sensitive subject you know people who suffer addiction homelessness the main thing I'd want to be is sensitive to people right okay we just arrived at Collins and so I'm gonna head in there and we're gonna do some recording first chorus had it had a couple moments like um, when it's cold like this does anybody miss the ones who were left out I think I wrote that down because I didn't that whole sequence I think okay. could be better yeah. you had at one point talked about um, n listing off the time again right yeah so instead of like I'll wait here for the dawn to break, oh, it's yeah. 4 a.m. it's 4 a.m. I'm still awake because it's hard to find a place to lay my head and then you come yeah. in with when it's cold like this yeah, yeah, yeah it's cold like this with like a lot of vulnerability in there. yeah it's so it funny how that's in your notes to touch it then take it out of your notes. no no like I, it's it's actually not because i kind of i trust yeah. you on that one because like you're right it does feel vulnerable and when i hear it i'm like oh it sounds so like kind of scared and alone kind of thing exactly and so it's a weird thing to hear yourself sound like that and not be like eh, ah, you know yeah. pretty pretty happy with that yeah the, the only thing i had on this one was a lyric thought I, I like how I sang it though. I love that too much, I think, to... Do you? Okay. I, I think that you're being... You're doing that thing... Overanalyzing? You're, you're, I think that the tag at the end of it, yeah. where it changes just a tiny bit, I think that is, that's perfect. I don't yeah. think you need a different lyric thing. Okay. I want the steel to come in and do a something. Leading into the... Leading into the piano. <laughs> I, gotta, I just gotta see if it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. Okay, I gotta try that, that little, what is that? Is that a harmonic or something? Yeah. I'm thinking something like this. <laughs> That's very cool. I'll have to get the timing and intonation right. How did you think of that? That's very unique, I eh? I just heard it. That's very cool. I heard it and it wasn't there, so I had to put it there. Very cool. Yeah. idea like it's so that's gonna be so cool though you can already hear like the way it complements that piano Got it sorted. Man, that sounds amazing. Now, is that the kind of thing, like if you wrote that first song and like it was performed live, would your goal be to try to reenact the same thing? Or is this kind of like a thing that in the studio, like it happens and then you'd free, free, freestyle a bit live? I think that if you write a little part for the song that is so good that that in and of itself becomes part mm. of the song. Yeah. Then people will almost miss it, wouldn't they? Right. Like, you yeah. want to have it there or something close to it. Do we refuse to see unless it was you or me who was the one left out in the cold? When it's cold like this, does anybody miss the one who was? 
I think for some reason the second part of it I liked a lot better. Maybe. Chapter 5, Releasing Cold Like This. Oh man, this is gonna be cool. Okay, I'm super excited about this. Also kind of nervous. Um, this is the first time for me, this is the first time for my buddy Colin to try something like this. So basically, we've been working really hard on a song. We've been working behind the scenes. Now, there's a guy named Tim Fox, who's one of the nicest guys I know, works so hard to help with community events, specifically coldest night of the year. It's kind of his baby a little bit. Every year he works really hard to organize the event. So I said to him, what if we worked with you to write a song and then we gave it to you and you could use it for your event? Okay, so there's the premise. Uh, Colin's arriving now, but we've been working on song. Oh, and Tim just arrived. So we've been working on this song they just arrived, this is exciting. I'm gonna film it. There's Tim. Tim's trying to figure out how do I get into the driveway. There's Colin showing up. Welcome, sir. How you doing? Good, how are you? Hey, Tim. You're already on camera. That didn't take long. <laughs> I was like, I might as well film the arrival because I was actually giving a little like preamble in the living room when you guys showed up, so I thought, well, I'll just film everyone arriving. So welcome, welcome. You bastards. <laughs> oh my god, that was great. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. That's amazing. That's that's it. That's what these folks are going through. Yeah. That's it. 100%, right? Like, the way that you humanized folks who are experiencing hopelessness, like, in the song, mm -hmm. is just, like, that's... Because that's what... Because <sighs> that's what people forget, yeah. right? They forget that we're dealing with human beings. Chapter 6, Doing Press Stuff. Right, you see that? Hear that noise? <laughs> That's like one of my favorite noises. That's an awesome noise. Yeah, man. Tim's here to pick us up. Tim's taking us over to the radio interview. This is not um, a pint of hard liquor. Maybe a little more for me. <laughs> Percolator, it's like you don't have a lot of room for, it doesn't make much coffee. Mm. You want some almond milk in yours? Sure, yeah. I always do almond milk. There she goes. And there she goes. So we're at UMB, at the UMB campus. Um, this is where the radio interview is being done. But uh, we realized we didn't have the right parking pass to park at UMB. So we've stopped at, I think, the security uh, building, and Tim has gone in to try to get a parking pass. Yeah, so they're not here anymore. Oh, shoot. Part two of that first uh, situation. So we were at what we thought was a security office. Um, it must have been the security office at one point, because Tim that's where he remembered it. Anyway, that's not where it was. We drove past it on the way in. So we're back at what we drove past. <laughs> Tim's in there now to try to get parking pass. Woo, success. Yeah, I can park anywhere in the blue. In the blue, <laughs> okay, so it's like, Jeez. gosh darn it. Okay, well, where's the sub on this map? You are indeed listening to CHSR FM 97.9 broadcast right here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. It's a live show today because I also have some live folks in studio. Very happy to welcome uh, three folks to the studio. The last few years I've been involved in the uh, Coldest Night of the Year campaign, so I started with some fundraising, myself and my partner, and then after that Tim said, well, why don't you get the, the band involved? And I think it was kind of in passing, Tim just, you know, one of those, like, this would be cool. Um, if there was like a song, like a song for the event. And I think, I don't know if Tim meant it seriously or if he was just kind of like thinking 
you know, I'll throw it out there. And we, we have Tim here. We can ask him. Tim, were was you serious, serious about this? <laughs> oh, I, oh, I was definitely serious. <laughs> but it wasn't until maybe five or six months ago that I started seriously trying to put this song together, trying to come up with what this song would look like. And um, I just so happened to know Colin Fowley, and we've worked together on a few things and become uh, friends as well. And I thought, well, I'm going to reach out to Colin and see if he would have an interest in uh, working with me on this project. Just as soon as I told him what it was for, um, and I kind of told him it was for this you know, coldest night of the year, and, and he just was like, well, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, don't worry about you know, uh, hiring me. Let's just do it as a collaboration. Let's just work together and see what we can come up with. And then, uh, really, that was the beginning of probably one of the coolest music projects I've ever worked on. We're back from CHSR. We just finished up our, our radio interview. We were able to park. We found our parking pass. Um, we got there just in time. I should have cleared my throat because what ended up happening probably about like a quarter of the way into the interview, I realized I had like a bad tickle in my throat and like uh, kind of congestion. And then you're like on a mic and there was a little mute button. I was like, maybe I should mute it and clear my throat, but I didn't. So every time I talk, it'd be like, yeah. <laughs> interview went really well, I think. Um, it was Mark with uh, CHSR, really awesome guy. Um, asked some really good questions to get us talking about the event coming up. Tim said some people texted him already and said, interview sounded good, because it was live. I keep forgetting that too. I'm like, when will it air? I'm like, no, it already aired. It aired while we were doing it. Yeah. So on to the, on, onward and upward, onwards and upwards. Any earn, or any earn outie. <laughs> Chapter 7, Making the Cold Like This Music Video. Unforgiving and alone, when your only friend is snow, hopefully we can find somewhere where there's a bit of snow in the foreground or something. Yeah. At least we got some. A couple, when was that, two days ago? Yeah, it should be some. We're outside my office, uh, and we're about to do a quick music video. I say quick music video. The music video itself will be the length of every music video, but the shooting of the video is going to be quick. We've got some, I don't know if you can see, some coats, some boots. Uh, I got some video gear in the front. We've got Mr. Colin Fowley over here. Hello. We're gonna head somewhere and we're just gonna do some filming. It's pretty guerrilla style. We're just gonna be out in the city streets. Uh, it's a little bit cold. <laughs> not too bad. It's not snowing, not storming. I'm gonna say it's a perfect, perfect night for it. Yeah. Yeah. Coming along with us. Yeah, there's good. Yeah, there's good spots there for sure, and it's actually quite well well lit too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like head over. To get your car over in that area. Kind of stick around that area. For you. Is there, I'm just wondering like, is there a, somewhere closer I can get? I feel like I look better in slow motion. Because <laughs> my my movements in regular motion are like more, it's more obvious how awkward I am. It's like reverb for your body. It's like, yes! <laughs> it is actually, that's like the perfect definition of that. It's reverb for the body. So nice. Okay, so we are filming the walking scene right now. Uh, this is a crucial part of the video. You want me to come like, Towards you or here? No, I think start here because I'm going to focus. That's cool. Yeah. Do you want me to get a little closer? Chapter 8 Performing Cold Like This the First Time. It's like the, the little like <laughs> vlog intro. Yeah. But we are at a big gymnasium thingy. Oh, and there's the music in the back. <laughs> and um, behind me here, we're setting up for uh, to play a few songs at the coldest night of the year event, which um, we've been working on for a while. It's a fundraiser for people experiencing hurt, hunger, and homelessness in our communities. And um, so there's a walk after this. So we've raised money as a band for the event. We also made a song and a music video that uh, you probably saw on the YouTube channel. And now we're gonna perform it live. If you haven't uh, heard of it or anything, check it out, cnoy.org. And it's Canadian thing across Canada and also international. So if you look for it in your community, you probably have the ability to walk in this event at, at your own in your own community, and it's every February. And we've got Colin here. Who you may remember from the behind the scenes and also the music video and the writing and the radio interview and all the other stuff we've done together. We've done a lot actually on camera. Like, Col yeah, Col yeah. Colin's a, I need Col to Colin's a pro with this. What's that? Colin's a pro with this now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's Tim Fox right there. Doesn't probably want to be on camera, but he's the man that, uh, you know, helped put this whole thing together. And, um, 
not just us doing the song and being here playing music, but also this event, like this is his baby. So we just got done sound check. Um, it's sounding good. It's a big room. So often with a big open room like this, there's tons of reverb. So solving the problem of like everything bouncing around, all the sound kind of like, but um, Matt with MRD Productions and uh, Jeff Melanson with Gem Productions are helping us out. So shout out to those guys because they're doing this pro bono as well. Highly recommend get involved in your own community. Um, find out what in your community supports these types of things. And they always need volunteers. They always need people to help out, even just in a, an encouraging message. Like message them and say, it's awesome what you're doing because sometimes they get tired too of trying to like, you know, hold down the fort. We're here, it's the end of the event, and um, it's been an amazing experience. I've talked to a few different people, uh, different organizers, people involved in the John Howard Society, which definitely go check that out. I'll put the link for uh, the ability to go support them. They just, they make a difference in so many people's lives. We want love in our communities. We want to see that spread. So for those who are maybe um, experiencing homelessness and things like that, of course we want to see them love, but lots of different things, right? Whether it's people dealing with depression or um, you know, whatever mental illness they might be dealing with or loss of a family member, grief, whatever it is. That's what music's here for. That's what we want to keep doing. And so it's been an awesome event. It's been great to be a part of it. So thank you to Coldest Night of the Year for letting Run the River be a part of it. And um, go check out all the links. I'm going to put them all. And stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel. Like, share. Have a good day. Keep the dial on six. We're this is channel six, so welcome back to channel six. Um, the C CBC, not CBC, CBD, which is not cannabis as you're thinking. CBD stands for the Canadian Broadcast Dudes. Um, and uh, so thanks for joining us at CBD. And. Uh,